Hey folks, Wolf Driver coming at you live. Uh, we had to take off the other feed. I'm just going to see if we're working here. Pardon the uh, technical issues, but I think uh, I'm hoping I've got them solved. We'll find out in one second. I'll explain everything. Yeah, it doesn't look like I do. So, let's see. Yes, we're live. Okay. So, for those of you that didn't catch it last time, we are down on the Amazing Chase course. Amazing Chase course is where the dogs chase a flag that's on a pulley system. It was originally a sport designed for sight hounds, but almost any breed can do it. Not all of them will be interested because, again, uh, sight hounds hunt through their vision, and this is a flag. It's a plastic flag traveling on a pulley on a course anywhere from three to five acres, and um, it has no scent. So this is for dogs. All dogs are prey driven to a certain extent. Some are more than others. Sight hounds, again, hunt through their vision. So this is designed not to encourage them to hunt, but to just give them some of their instinctual um, pursuits. So excuse me for one second. Uh, this is Bill. Hi there. Yes. That's um, one more box is good for now, if that's okay. Super. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Take care, Toby. Thanks. Bye-bye now. Bye. Sorry, folks, that was my, uh, that was actually the veterinarian's office, so I always answer whenever the vet calls. Um, Princess, okay, so real quickly, Princess is the eldest dog out here, and she is right there. <laughs> She's right here. Let me point her out to you. She's 14 years old, okay? So a little better than 14 now. So it's miraculous that she's even excited enough to want to do this. She's got arthritis, typical. Um, it's mild for a dog her age. She's in excellent shape because of all the activities we do, but certain ailments are very hard to deal with, of course. So I use different supplements to manage that. And she has a couple other, luckily only small medical issues, such as a hyperthyroid and um, um, sometimes a, a, a weak bladder. So, uh, but there's me medicinally, those can be managed real well. And we've done that for years and it's been doing great. In any case, what you're looking at now is a barn where there's, this is new. I rent this area, okay? I lay and lease this, and I call it the Amazing Chase Course. Again, it's lure coursing, which is designed for sight hounds. Right now, there I understand there's lure courses. There's pretty much setups similar to this where you can take your dog. Zaro, good boy. Where you can take your dog to do this activity. They're divided by fences is how I get it. And um, what happens is with lure coursing, um, a lot of dogs, not all dogs show interest. Some do, some don't. Again, a sight hound's definitely going to show it. The difference with a sight hound, they're running again. This is anywhere from three to five acre course. So the difference with a sight hound and dealing with a husky, a sight hound will run this once or twice. The husky will run this all day long. So I've got one of my huskies, who's Zaro. He's got some Malamute in him. He's, he's right there. Will do this course for better than 12 miles, just basically running in a circle. And I'll, I'll give you a tour of the course as we go on, just giving you a preliminary description here. So um, I rent this, which was originally a horse pasture, and I'm lucky I found, and there, there you get some dominance. That's Chase dominating Zara, which is fine. It's a uh, good socialization. That's the way they interact with each other, and that is perfectly acceptable. Um, in some instances, now they won't do that to Princess, the female. Some instances, um, if that would become a problem, I would correct it. They are wearing collars that have audio tones to them. I've taught them audio tones have different um, meanings. So different audio tones, uh, whether I, I can beep it a certain amount of times or I can give them a long audio tone, and that'll let them know maybe a behavior is not acceptable. I want them to stop. I want them to come to me, whatever. So huskies are very hard to train. They're um, not a food-motivated dog. All dogs are food-motivated, but what's going to work? If you 
have a food and it's, if you have something, a treat they like, we train with hot dogs. If you have a treat they like and you're training them, yeah, they'll come to you if there's no distractions. But as soon as you put a distraction in the mix or Huskies are very smart, they realize he wants me to come to him so he can put a leash on me. They're going to think twice and probably not come to you after a certain amount of time. So food doesn't work with Huskies. Um, I know there's trainers out there that'll tell you it will. It won't. Um, my system, and you can go to idogettame.com. That's I-D-O-G-E-T-T-A-M-E, idogettame.com. And you'll notice it's a similar Wolf Driver logo. Explains more about my training, but to go into all the details, I need to write a book. So um, I specialize in Huskies, and I don't train other people's dogs, but I, tra I help people through Facebook, through my websites, and through these broadcasts explaining about Huskies. I've had Huskies for, been doing this for better than 20 years, and almost anyone with a Husky will tell you never let them off leash. And that's very true, unless they're trained in um, my training system or a similar training system. And there's trainers in different areas of the country that can do the kind of training I do, but um, you just, uh, it takes a little while to find the right one that'll work with you and that really understands the Husky breed. Very, very difficult breed. They're one of the closest breeds to the wolf, so they're very independent, very stubborn, very prey driven. Again, that's why this course is really nice. Now, again, not all the dogs are interested. It's basically Princess, who's 14 years old, and Zara. Zara's the one that looks most like a husky. He's actually got Malamute in him. Isn't that funny? And these, the three you're looking at now, are all white huskies. So, what we do here is we'll chase the flag for, uh, I try to get like five sometimes even 10 miles when Princess doing this. Uh, in her elder years, five or six miles is what I strive for on this course. Um, Zorro, again, anywhere from 12 to 18 miles, believe it or not, just going in circles. I mean, it's amazing, but dogs are very instinctual and habitual. So even though it's going in circles, they'll, they'll continue to do it because they feel like they're, they're instinctually attracted to it, basically, for a quick description there. So the goats are an interesting addition here. They've only been here the past three to five times we've been here. We usually come here once a week, depending on weather and um, depending on what other activities we're doing. Here comes Zorro and Chase. And Chase just wants to play with Zorro. Chase, we're on live TV. How dare you do that now? <laughs> so some people will take that wrong. Hey there, Deborah. I'm doing great. How are you doing? Great to see you. Thanks so much for saying hello. And hello, Linda. How are you? I hope everybody's doing well. So... The, as I was saying, the goats are a new addition here. Um, I rent this pasture, and there's a couple houses here that are part of these lands, and somebody got goats, so that's why they're in there. And these goats are somebody's pet. They're really nice. And we've got a barrier between the dogs and them, which holds up well. It's flexible. It's not like, uh, you know, if they really wanted to, if I wasn't here, um, they might actually be able to get to them. They're not going to do much if they get to them. The goats are bigger than them. But, uh, and goats can... Um, take a defensive posture as well but it's great for them to see them in this kind of setting uh, it helps them they get excited it encourages them to exercise here and it motivates them in multitude of ways but also when we go to farms where we free range where they're off leash it becomes um, sometimes they'll actually get to mingle with cows and horses. Uh, we go right through pastures. So this is good training for them, and that's good training for them because they'll be literally nose to nose, and there's nothing separating them. And if you've watched any of my live videos, you've seen any of my photos, I have a big Flickr library. I've got a big YouTube channel. You can see the, uh, the uh, dogs interacting in many ways. It's really cool to watch. And because I've um, trained them really well, it is totally safe but I still need to be there to manage the situation. By the way, just real quickly, we've actually raced some drafting dogs. When I say, I'm some drafting horses, when I say race, drafting horses are like um, Clydesdales that you see on the Budweiser commercial. Jack, and I'm just saying his name. See how he turned, turned away? Because he was starting to whine a little bit. He's down there with Princess. That's Princess and Jag. The other two were on the other part of the course, Sorrow and Chase. But when they're down there with each other, um, Huskies can be, they, they function well as a pack, but they're also a little territorial sometimes, and you have to watch, especially Princess is very dominant, and because she's 14 years old, she, in a, in a real wolf pack or a real dog pack, she would be challenged because of her age, because someone, she hasn't, 
alpha status, if you will. She's been a senior to these dogs. She was about uh, five years old when I got these guys as puppies. I kind of, um, uh, a family had to get rid of Princess, so I kind of rescued her. And I don't know if you can see. Easy, guys. You can see the goats there. I'll take you closer. The sun's going in. I'm just trying to give them some breathing room because I want them to engage. We, we, we're down now. Normally, the course would be running. Sorry for Chase. He's just, just having a ball. <laughs> He's doing it's that Again, they're two males. It's all dominance there. But it's acceptable behavior. They wouldn't do that to Princess because she would let them know. I don't want that done. Um, what I'm going to do is, because we're down, uh, he's actually got the bike with him. What I do here, there's a course here that we've made outside of this lure coursing fence uh, course. I can take the dogs free ranging on a scooter I have specifically designed for this. Those of you that are familiar with me, I'm sure have seen me on the scooter before where they attach to it. This is a different scooter. It's all electric power, but they're actually off leash here. When I do it in my neighborhood, they're attached to it almost like mushing. I call it my rough board, almost like a surfboard. So uh, it's pretty cool. But we do it here because all the dogs aren't interested in chasing the flag. So this assures that they get some exercise in. It's about a five eighths of a mile course that I take them on. Hey, Jim, I want to use that scooter when you can. Um, so with this course, there's a lot of breakdowns. A lot of things happen because, again, if, if I didn't explain it well enough, I did an earlier broadcast. So part of me, if I repeat myself and part of me, if I, if I, uh, didn't explain it well enough. I'm going to try to do it now. But basically, lure coursing, the sport we're doing here, we the flag, it's a flag. It travels on anywhere from a three to five acre course. It's designed for sight hounds because sight hounds can see there's no scent to the flag. So other dogs may or may not like it. Thanks, Jim. I'm going to get on this scooter now, and I'm going to take you for a ride. And I'll adjust the cameras a little bit, folks but I am driving. Sorry, it's a little bouncy. Come on, guys. Also, we're getting ready to go through a gate, folks. When you go through another thing, territory, when you have a pack of huskies like we do here, there can be, there's always somebody that's alpha. So getting through the gate first is part of the lure. Come on, Jack. And good boy, Jack. So what happens is you can have a little, just just that, just going through the gate can create a problem where they will argue with each other. Come on, have a little bickering. So I hope, come on, Jack. You'll hear me raise my voice because we are out in the wilderness now and we don't know what we're going to come in contact with. So I apologize for the bumps. I'm trying my best, but uh, sometimes it's a a little bit of a challenge. Sometimes some of my broadcasts, I have someone with me to help hold the camera and do this steady. So this is five eighths of a mile. I'm looping up, of course, beautiful out here. All farmlands. And they're getting ready. They might have, I think it's too early in the year to quite see it yet. But uh, they tilled it and I think they put it in shape. Actually, that might be winter weed out there. So I'm gonna stop because Princess and Jag, Princess is ahead of Jag because Jag is sniffing something. And I do this for the dogs. So, hey Mimi, how are you? Great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. So the dogs, when they like to sniff, I let them sniff, especially out here because we don't have anything to compete with. I don't have people. Chase, the only, Chase. Now you can see he's getting down to the field pretty far. So that's why I call it his name. Now he'll get to the edge of that field and it'll stop, but he'll start heading back. They know where we're going, but he wants to be first back. And that's, again, the competitive nature. Come on, Zara. Zara's right with me now. Sorry about the camera view. I'm trying my best, folks. But I am actually, I'll show you the scooter if you didn't see me get on it. So this is the same kind of unit that I run when I take the dogs off leash. And if I wipe out, this will make for good a little muddy here. Chase! Come on, Jag! So, Jag and Princess are taking their time, which is fun. Jag's actually shortcutting me, and shortcutting is what I call it. It's part of our training. And 
reflect on that a little bit and work up this hill. So again, we're traveling five eighths of a mile. It's just a course outside of the lore course of Amazing Chase course. I call lore course Amazing Chase because it's kind of lore coursing on steroids because we're doing it for Huskies. So, I'm gonna turn in here and I'm gonna look back on Princess. And there she is coming through. I'll give you a view of her. And she's popping and popping. And I'm gonna start going. So she usually is behind me because she doesn't keep up so quick. And the boys are usually ahead because they're younger. But some days, like yesterday, for three miles of our six mile run, she was actually keeping up with the boys. This is so awesome. I love just, I love watching them run because if you can see up close on them, they got smiles on their face. I mean, they're just loving it. But they're made to do. That's just instinct for them. Um, they think they can come up with prey. That's their motivation, really. So you can see we're going right back to our course. And you can see Princess is coming right up there. <sighs> I'm good, Mimi. Great to see you. Run Zara, run. That's all he does. Sure. What's that, Jim? I'm just talking. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So as I told you in the past, um, I almost always have uh, someone from my team with me on most of my adventures and uh, that gives me a chance i love photographing everything if you go to Flickr, you'll see a big library with like over twenty thousand photos i've been doing this for years and i love documenting what i do to have the memories of all the dogs and all the experiences because when i'm older and can't do this anymore or the dogs can't be here to do it with me there's um always always those memories that are live fondly through through my photos and videos but um and i've had huskies in the past i mean again i've been doing this for better than 20 years so um i've already gone through the cycle and i know what it's about and that's why um i try to go out three to four times a week with the dogs just to be with them as much as possible and do this and see princess so what happened was she was heading back and she picked up on a scent and that's okay i mean there's no rules here everything's everything's right just have a good time as long as they're um, being obedient in the sense of keeping the keeping their hierarchy, not challenging each other, and um, not pushing the envelope. Here, they can do pretty much anything they want. So, this gate is cool. It helps keep them from just going off on their own. But if you can see, they could. There's there's fencing. We put some of this when we first started doing this about this ex, this activity at this place about six years ago. We um, added, I don't know if you can see this, but the screen-like mesh netting, which it's kind of deer netting. And it works good, except for the dogs can go right through it. In fact, they do sometimes if I'm on the other side and I'm calling them to come through this gate, sometimes they take a shortcut because it's not really attached good to the, to the fence. It would never keep them in if I wasn't here, but they understand the boundaries. And because they get so much activity, they're not really into challenging it. They're happy where they're at here. In fact, they'll be like, oh, no, she wants to go for another run. <laughs> so I'm going to show you my controller, which I don't know if you've seen in the past. Um, this is it. Let me see. Can you read it? Yes, but barely. So what it tells me, it tells me what dog I'm looking at. I'm looking at Chase now, and it's color-coded. It's got the ability to audio, to communicate through audio with the dogs through beeping signals. And it keeps track of their mileage and their top speed, their average speed. So it tells me that Chase, and where they're at. Chase is 42 yards away from me. He traveled a mile and a half. And he has average speed of 4.64 miles. Now, I'm going to let you compare that to Zaro. Zaro's already going three and a half miles. Okay, just chasing this flag. And Princess, she hasn't been as active today. She's the eldest again. She's done a mile and a half. But yesterday she ran six miles really, really well. So um, whatever she wants to do here, if she wants to chase, if she wants to lay down, she'll never lay down now, I'm just saying. <laughs> just trying to entertain you with that one. Um, <laughs> Mimi says, come on, Princess. Yeah, because Princess is uh, lagging back sometimes. Okay, so I'm just on the scooter and I'm riding back to our main area. You can see Zaro. Well, you could see him, so the camera just fell. You can see my shadow. Actually, 
He's chasing the flag now. So Jim's got the course worker and Princess is on. So I'm going to come up here. I haven't brought this up here on this show today, so I'm going to do that. Put my scooter back. I'll be able to adjust the camera. It won't be so bumpy. Ooh. And that's Jim running the show. Here comes Princess. And Princess. So these huskies are a little unusual because they're all white and they're a woolly coat. A woolly coat is a double coated long haired dog. We call that a woolly coat. So in the wild, for at least huskies, it's, it's more of an anomaly. It's not as much of a common occurrence. And Princess is the old girl. She does she does need, Mimi said, Princess is the old girl. And you can see these are the tubs that help them cool. Now Princess, as she uh, heats up a little more, she might actually get into the tub. She can, it's low enough, she can still step into it. But at her age, it's still a little work picking up her legs. And here comes Zaro. You can see him smiling. When when a dog hangs the, to the tongue to the side, I call it a drooling smile. That is the closest thing they say to a human smile. And we have Kathleen. Hello. Great to see you. Uh, oh, you've been Ubering. Very cool. Ubering's cool. I take Ubers a lot of places I travel, and I have a cousin that Ubers. So um says it's a very uh, lucrative business. So very cool. Great to see you. It is a beautiful day here. And uh, we're, we're at temperatures right now, probably close to 60. What, what do you think temperature is, Jim? About 60. About 60. Yeah, oh, it might be 65, he said. So, you know, as I say, here comes the flag, folks. And here comes Princess. And she can still see it enough to chase it. I mean, it's, it's awesome. So, I mean, at her age, being 14, again, Zara will catch the flag and in... In lure coursing, you know, with a real course and running sighthound dogs for competition, they're not allowed to do that. Here comes the play. And here comes Princess. And the boys are down. In case um, you're just joining us, you see the, if you can, the barn down there. There's goats in there. And the goats are somebody's pets. And they're really friendly and they're nice. Oh, he caught it full speed, Jim. So when he catches it, now Zara's, and now Chase is going to get him. I'm going to see if I can get you in on that. You see that? Okay, here comes Princess. There we go. I love when I when I photograph, I look for times like this where the sun will almost silhouette the dogs. It's just beautiful. Uh, you're in the '60s too, Mimi. You're also in Indiana, Kathleen, in the '60s. Yeah, it's uh, it's nice. <laughs> Certainly, I like it. Dogs don't. But, um, and they're actually shedding very early this year because last week, I believe it was, we had some 70s, almost 80 degree days. So I'm going to try to, you, you hear her bark? Uh, uh, she's so engaged and so into what she's doing that she actually barks at the flag and I just love it. <laughs> it, it is really funny to watch them do it. And you can see Zara's got the flag and we yell at them because cause he'll bite it off of there and then we got to make a new one. Good boy, Zaro. Oh, he grabbed it still. Um, and you know we're we're just doing this for fun, so it's okay. He he can do it all he wants to do. I mean, we want to keep it going, so it's a good boy, Zaro. He got by him. Here come the two. Again, that's Princess. Now there goes Zaro in the tub. Let's see if Princess. She's just going to drink out of it. She's not warm enough yet to motivate her to walk into it. He's going to try to. It's, uh, sometimes it's doesn't zoom in as well. Oh. Sorry, it switched directions, folks. You got me. You got my big mug. There we go. Okay. I was just trying to get you a wider angle view. So, it is funny to watch him do this. And again, Zara will do this. Let me see. Let me comments back. Zara. Oh. Sorry, folks. Zara will do this, believe it or not, for anywhere from 12 to I've had him do as much as 18 miles truly incredible here comes Chase now Chase is going to harass him anytime the machine stops Chase knows it and Chase is like I'm going to go and harass Zorro and this is <laughs> folks this is a little obscene actually it's a dominance thing they're all males they won't do that to the female because Princess will let them know even at her age quiet mode turned on okay sorry Sorry, the, uh, the, what's that, Jim? It's the line broke. Line broke? Okay. So, um, jeez. 
your husky look like looks like starting to shed yes um we all wish we had zara's energy i'm gonna try to i'm, I'm apologizing again because this is uh the screen's a little funky Swipe left and reveal i'm gonna turn this sorry that's me again and i'm gonna turn it back around and give you a view okay hopefully we're we're getting somewhere and that's Jag. Jag's actually into the water. So Jag, his coat is... Oh, look at this. This is cool. Okay, how cool is that? And sometimes this is a little hard. Like, certain dogs won't do this with each other, share the tub like that, because they're territorial. Especially, you'll get the, the territorial uh, aspects from the Huskies. But those two are fine with it. There's so many dynamics going on that I'm always amazed by them and always learning a lot myself every day even from from what I do doing this all the time but look at them because uh, I think I'm trying to get you get me back on the screen excuse me for one sec it says I'm in quiet mode Squirt, turn on swipe left of course this doesn't work like it should I'm gonna Light up my phone so I can see your comments, folks. Apologize. Let me uh, let me get back to the right page here. Got to have like 30 phones doing this. Um, okay, now I'll be able to read some comments here. Okay. <laughs> okay, we got. Look at them playing with each other. Look at these are rolling over. <laughs> and this is all just pure fun. He's enjoying himself. He's happy. Scratching his back on the ground. He just shook off a bunch of water. And Zorro just got, had a spa day. But you know me, that doesn't stop me from taking him out because um, we're just really active. So the main reason I give them a spa day is to maintain their coat. Um, they get clean. They're clean for a day. But it's really the dirt will embed underneath the hair and you don't see that they're dirty and need it, and you don't see that they're clean And uh, when they are, except for the outside. But they can be clean and just a muddy, on, just a little bit muddy or dirty on the outside. So it's deceiving, especially with a long-haired, double-coated dog. So Jim's taking a ride around the course, and he's gonna, we have a problem with the, well, this happens a lot, because you saw Zara grab it, so when he grabs it, it puts a lot of extra stress on the line. Jack! Good boy. They're, they're no, naturally chasing Jim because I've trained them to follow me on the ATV, on the scooter, whatever the case may be. So that's why they were chasing him. I was just letting them know he doesn't have to. And here come Chase, Jag, and Zaro. And you can see. Now, Zaro is their baby brother. Even though he's the largest of them, he's uh, about 75 pounds. And these two are roughly 50 pounds. Zaro, Zaro no! Or was shooting the flag. Um, they will harass him, and but it's funny because they'll take turns harassing each other. Look, look, look at this. The, Jag is a joker, okay, and Jag just wants to play with Chase there. So they those two get their own exercise in, just going back and forth with each other. Here's Zaro. The uh, princess is doing her own thing. A lot of times she's she loves being with the pack, but she is very dominant, as I said. So when she's doing her own thing, I'm okay with it because sometimes with the pack, it becomes a little too competitive uh, with her dominant nature, especially her and Chase. And um, that's always a tense situation depending on what we're doing and where we're at. So I've always got to manage that. Well, out in the wild, he would um, challenge her for her alpha position and um, it would be basically a fight a duel now they huskies aren't a breed that will kill each other typically like that but um you want to be careful because princess is elderly and um she could get she could get in a compromising position so i'm always watching for that sometimes with the boys i'll let them to a certain extent work themselves out not um fight with each other but um push each other to two different limits and I'll manage that when I'm with them and they understand how that translates to when they're alone so um, 
I've been through many Huskies and uh, through different situations and shelters working with them and uh, friends have had them that I've helped train as well as my own. And it's a very difficult breed and the more you have, the more you've got to interact and manage them. So again, we're fixing the line, uh, Jim's running through, and that's another reason we use a scooter out here on the course, because we can get to it. Again, we're on about three and a half, we're on about four acres this course. So they'll loop it. Now, what you saw me free range with them, that's roughly five eighths of a mile. Around here, I'm gonna say uh, every loop around here is about five eighths of a mile, and Zara will do it all day long. So you can imagine back and forth in all different ways. So I, I love watching them come when they're coming at me here comes chase now chase lopes like a wolf by the way if you have any questions please don't hesitate to ask and she's coming by. Uh, i've got the other phone in my hand so i can answer them answer your questions uh pretty much right away i don't always get this opportunity but i've got a cool rig i'm sporting today to hold the phones so I can do a cool broadcast. Bless you, Princess. Princess has allergies and... So! So! Did it get you, Jim? So! So! Good boy. Oh, you had it. There he goes. So! Ho! He's just having a time of his life. <laughs> so he's really not supposed to catch that flag, but we're letting him do it. We... There we go. Good boy. And there's Princess right behind me. And I'll take you over to the equipment. We have a toy in there. You can hear her. Even. How cool is that? She's loving it. And Jag, Jag's a joker. Joker. So he's just he's just roaming around, seeing what he can find. Scraps of anything laying around. That's his typical. Uh, mode of operation. So I'm gonna come over here and show you the equipment. So this is, if you can see the line here, but okay, this is pretty much our setup. Now, through many iterations, this has been for years we've developed this. I know it looks a little raggedy, but it's been through a lot. But it <laughs> it runs great. We. Have, we actually custom made it as our, this equipment because the machine underneath, uh, I'll try to point to it right there, that machine is one of the original lore coursing machines I bought. It's the heaviest duty one they make, so it's a portable machine. It runs off of a car battery, so people take it to a field, they set up a course, and they invite other dogs to compete or they have their own competitions. Well, that machine lasts for a little bit, but not long enough for these Huskies because we're out here for three, four hours. It'll conk out being battery operated it gets really hot and we actually had batteries catch on fire so here comes Zara look at that full tilt I've clocked in at 30 miles per hour and this point, so she acts like she's going to chase it so what we did was because one of the guys on my wolf driver pit crew team we actually built those machines and built our own versions and we made them like they want to get hot they'd be able to run for extended periods of time the only thing is that the torque ratio is a little different with electric and battery. So battery can take off a lot quicker, which means when the dog's on the flag, he'll be less likely to grab it. The top end speed's similar. They can go about 40 miles per hour. You want to have them, these machines are built to go 40 miles per hour originally because that's what sight hounds can do, like greyhounds. They can run about 40 miles per hour. So <clears throat> the machine should at least be able to keep up with them. So they're chasing it. And there's the pretty princess. Look at her. And I'm going to do a quick bounce. You see Chase is still carrying on down there. Any questions, folks? I'm, I'm here for your questions. What I do is uh, check on my... i got to put my phone on. Oh, pardon me. I check on my controller. This is all Garmin equipment I'm using. The princess is over two miles now. So. And... She's loosening up. The more activity she gets, the more mobility she gets in her joints and works her stiffness and cramps out. And she actually, the more activity we do, the better she becomes. So it's really interesting 
to watch. I'm just listening because I heard an unusual sound. Jag! So what I'll do is I'll give Jag, because he's a little further away now, and he's getting into it, I get a little audio tone. Boy, Jag! And I know you can't see it from here, but he moved away. And I'll go back to that position. And I, I don't want to stop him. I could from going back to essentially fraternize him with the goats. But I want to let him know the pack daddy's in the house. So don't get any ideas of tugging on that fence or um, getting overtaken with a aggressive posture. And it keeps him in check so he knows. And it's harmless, just a little audio tone that I've trained him to let him know that's the way he should act. And that's what he does. <coughs> now Princess is down there. And like I said, it's always a hot situation because of her. I'm gonna walk down there. But I actually don't wanna walk too far. I'm trying to keep him over on this end because it'll keep Princess engaged. She wants, they, Princess wants to be where, they all wanna be where I wanna be. That's why they keep coming back and checking on me. But the closer I get to the barn down there, they'll tend to gravitate towards there and might not be as interested in the game, especially Zorro and Princess, and I want to keep them interested. The other two, they're, they're never interested anyway. Oh, she's pacing her ass. Here comes Zorro. Good boy, Zorro. Boy, his eyes really sparkle. Okay, so we'll do a quick... Jack! Gonna do a quick mileage check on Zara, folks. Five and a half miles of running around this course. I mean, how wild is that? I'm gonna, next time the machine breaks down again, I'm gonna take them for another loop around the um, <clears throat> outside course that we free range on. And I'm gonna do that again to just get the others some exercise to build on their mileage. I'm a mileage guy. I um, always try to get them as much miles as they can in because. I feel that that's what keeps them healthy. It, you know, they can be out here not doing anything, just entertained by the goats, and they're not going to get that energy out of them. So it's important we get the energy out of them in some way. That's why we're doing the adventure. So, And that's what I mean um, when you do things with dogs. You have to appeal to their instincts. Like some dogs like chasing the ball. They'll play fetch with you. Huskies typically won't. So... You're not going to get much exercise or mileage out of them that way. And I'm going to take them for a little ride. Because I try to do this anywhere from uh, four to six times. I'm getting right now on. I'm going to take them out, Jim. Come on, guys. Here. Here. There's a magic word. Come on, guys. Look at that. Easy guys. Here's the magic word, which means come to me, stop what you're doing, and um, obey the command pretty much instantaneously because there could be a danger, there could be uh, something approaching, or I just need them for whatever reason right away. So if you were with me last time, you saw me run the course one way. Come on, Jack. You saw me run the course one way. I'm going to do this loop in an opposite direction because it's like giving the dogs a totally different view. And it'll motivate them. Jack! No, Jack! Good boy. They're getting a little feisty with each other. Come on, Jack! Because the goat, as I said, has them going. Did you see Princess? She, she uh, tripped herself up just a little bit. And she does that. Her front paws will give out on her. Come on! Jack! Zorro! Chase! Here! Zorro, come on, here. Come on, guys. Come on, here, here. Here. Come on, here. Chase. Come on, guys, here. So, I've got Chase and Zorro right here with me. Princess and Jag. Come on, Jag. Come on, Jag. You might be able to get the shadow of me. I'm riding. Oh, I don't know. If, I think I did show you the scooter. Apologize if I did. So we're actually free range. Come on, Zara. 
So, you gotta be careful because Jim's just working the machine over there. He's got it running. Good boy, Jack. And with that, Zara's really focused on that. And he could run into me, so I just better watch where I'm going, too. Come on, good boy. I know you can't see the dogs. They're on the left of me now. Two of them. The other two are behind. The girl. Always praise them because we're doing the right thing and let them know that we're having fun. Come on, Chase. And when they're with Dad, everything's good. Come on. Come on, guys. Let me give you a quick view of them. Can you see? This princess coming around and Jag. Good boy, Jag. Jag is usually shortcut me. I meant to give you a little my dissertation on shortcutting, what that means. I will get in a position where I can talk about it. Come on, guys. But uh, too much going on right now. So, again, I'm running this in reverse just to give them something different. It's a different uh, motivation because once they've gone in one area. Come on. Come on, Jag. Good boy, Jack. They're not as motivated to do it again. And to keep their motivation up, sometimes you reverse directions. That's all they need. It doesn't always work. That's why when I go on my extended dog trips, when we do our horse driver on tour for, for wheeling runs, um, we usually bring a driver. Someone driving. Come on, pretty. We usually bring the driver because he drops us off in one spot and picks us up in another so we don't have to double back. Come on, good girl. She's picking up on the scent. Come on, good girl. All good. So what I'll do here is make sure she, come on, makes the turn because that way I like to see her going in the direction I'm going before I head back out. Good girl. Now, Chase is really far up there. He knows where we're going. He's okay. Nice open field. I can see him. So I'm not going to call him back. Jay, uh, Zaro's doing a pit stop. By the way, this is all this out in the wild stuff. I'm calling it out in the wild. Free ranging and being in different environments with other animals is encourages them to go to the bathroom a lot and the activity course, which is really healthy for their systems. And I noticed it big time because like the first activity of the week, they'll go to the bathroom a lot of times. Come on, Jack. The next day, the next time, if I don't do an activity for a few days, they'll have that same bathroom progression. But if we keep going back to back to back a lot of days, they don't have to go as much because it's through their system. It's amazing. Um, probably like a human, but dogs want to empty themselves because that is uh, if they're planning on having confrontations out in the field, whether they're uh, praying, they're uh, going to mingle with prey, potential prey, or they're going to have a confrontation with uh, another animal. So that's why they want to they have to go to the bathroom in the middle of a, of a, a duel, essentially. So, and this is being a little barbaric, but that's the way a dog thinks. And a lot of these instincts are from their ancestors' wolves. Or at least in that lineage. Good boy, Jag. That's Jag in front of me. Princess behind. Zaro and Chase are well inside of the fence area. Um, and they're doing their thing. Princess is doing great, for those of you concerned. Just, uh, this pace keeps her going. And she's going to come through here. Oh, pretty. Good girl. So now I'll be able to check. Sorry, I couldn't check. I know if we had any more messages or not. <laughs> My, uh, okay, sorry. I'm just getting to this, Mimi. Um, Princess wants to walk out here. I'm going to let her. Um, your female is more dominant over the male. Yeah. Yeah. The... <laughs> You know, my experience with Huskies, the females are very dominant. And um, at least the ones I, I know can go both ways. But um, the ones that I've been around. So um, 
I'm always on the lookout for that. And I'll tell Jim hello too. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, they're um, what my, the original person that trained me, my mentor, and uh, one of my best friends, my, my best friends ever. Unfortunately, he's uh, passed on. But uh, his favorite saying was that dogs will surprise you every day. They'll do something new you didn't think of. They'll act the way you didn't thought. Something will happen. So basically, expect the unexpected as much as you can. And um, I still get surprised by them, by their behavior and actions. Come on, guys. Oh, no, me. Oh, oh, Jack, 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 Jack. Good boy. He was going to um, collide with Chase, which is okay. Look, the princess is telling him. It's so funny. And that's cool. I love seeing her being feisty still, as long as I'm managing it, because that keeps her on her toes. <laughs> on her toes. Okay, good girl. So, just to let you know, mileage wise, she's still, she didn't climb into the bowl yet, but she might. But she can drink on the outside. That's fine. Look at them still. How cool is that? So, to let you know, mileage wise, I'm going to give you a quick princess is 2.6 miles. Chase a little bit ahead of princess, 2.7. Oh, What's that? Oh, he's really been six. Wow. Yes, yeah, six miles. She's done 2.6. So, and I'll give you Jag's the least active here. And I'll give you a quick reading on Jag's the couch potato. <laughs> but the exercise is awesome for him and it helps manage him. He's got two miles in, so. That's cool. I try to get um, my goal for Jags three miles on a day like today. And um, still plenty of time to get Princess's mileage in. And as well as Zaro, whatever he gets, he gets. Because he's just so motivated. It's Princess for you. There's Chase. And there's Jay. So it's really cool here because I can drive the vehicle right into the course. Because again, I'm renting this area. Here goes Princess. And Jim's going to cat mouse play with her. What I mean by that is he's going to try to get her attention so she goes after it right here you've got to be careful with Zara because he will catch it she won't actually she respects it when she gets to it yeah, see she's taking off she's feeling good when she gets it she'll bite it for a second and let it go Zara will take he's going to war with the flag and she's uh, gonna see Chase he's picking up on a scent uh, you probably can't see that out there Princesses. Just doing her stuff. <coughs> so let me see. If you got Love the way again. Then the sun. Oh, there she goes again. See, this motivates them to chase it, which gets some activity. And with the other dogs here, we're all together. So even though they're not necessarily chasing it, you've seen them roughhouse some, and you see the laps I do with them. And that's all part of this whole experience. Does he? Zoro! Zoro! Did he, did he mess you up, Jim? <laughs> so he got it in his mouth. So, excuse me, folks. I'm just going to grab a... Take it down, buddy. I'm going to grab a... A swig of some iced tea here, and uh, I'll be right with you. Just going into the truck, bring our own drinks. Jim, I got an iced tea for you if you want, buddy. Mm -hmm. Iced tea. Good, I like that. Hi, Jaggy. Maybe Jag wants to say hi to everybody. What's up, buddy? How are you, good boy? So Jag is the smallest of all of my Huskies. And small in stature and size. He's uh, actually, uh, I'd say he's mm, 18 inches maybe. So average Husky is roughly uh, 22, 24 inches. He's a few inches shorter. And um, he's stocky like a Husky though. But he's a funny boy because He's not very, when I got him, even though it was a puppy, he had been, he came from someone that um, didn't have time to work with him at all. 
and from what I understand, he was just left outside. So what I did was he had developed a very uh, inferiority, low confidence issue, and even riding in the car was challenging for him. When he came to me in a crate, I couldn't even get him out of the crate. That's how hard it was. Um, through much work and all these activities, he's done really well. And we built the confidence in him. So one of his issues, like going across bridges, was really hard for him, especially when you could see below. That's hard for all dogs, but he was the hardest to break, and uh, he's pretty good on it now. If you see us on our, our runs, when we get out uh, with a bridge where you can see underneath the water or whatever we're crossing, and he trots right along. Sometimes I'll need a little encouragement, but that's what wolf driving's all about. And I love building confidence in dogs because when they realize sometimes their full potential, it's the coolest thing in the world, or at least some of their potential. And they grow, they blossom like a flower once they start learning their, uh, sowing their oats and understanding their capabilities. It's really cool. And they get to explore it to the nth degree on what I do with them. And I still challenge them in a the sense as much as I can, um, getting in tight spots, um, you know, uh, getting further away from me, being around unusual animals, all with uh, the safety factor, me understanding the situation. But uh, it's quite, quite cool. Zone in on them. <coughs> How are we doing? Okay, cool. He pulled it. Yep, that's Zora. So they're, oh, I'm sorry, I'm giving you a bad show here. Okay. Trying to get my camera back. I might have to turn this around. I'm sorry. If you're looking at me again, at least my beard. Okay. That's why I don't zoom in, because I can't zoom out for some reason. Um, I don't know if it's Facebook or what. It's really hard to do on the phone. So they're just kind of congregating down here. We're, we're fixing the lines. I'll pull the line off the, off the uh, pulley system. So we have to fix it. And that's why Jim's here. And I'm just observing them. Letting them chill, if you will. Okay, he got it. It was moving pretty good. Okay, you feel it. So Jim's going to take the scooter that I just rode. He's going to ride around. By the way, folks, um, got a lot of new stuff we're doing in the sense that got a whole new bike we're designing. Um, going to build it out, and hopefully you'll be able to see it soon. And uh, actually sending some of the Wolf Driver pit crew to Utah to repair some of the bikes, get this bike further along, and it's going to be uh, interesting and exciting. So hope you can be part of it. Now that Princess is, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen me out on the dog-powered go-kart, if you will, what I call Wolf Driver on tour. Got a few names for it, fur wheeling, etc. But Princess rides in the back a lot, so it puts a lot of weight. I, I ride in these, if you haven't seen me, in these unusual bikes that essentially are low to the ground, the recumbent bikes, and they have three or four wheels. They're trikes or quads. And Princess, we made a special seat. Jag! Princess! Now they're waiting for the machine to start, Zara and Princess. So they're congregating and getting a little antsy. So I'm going to talk to them a little bit. Just let them know. Pack Daddy is in the house. Keep things in check. But with the bike, so good boy. With the bike, because she rides in the back a lot, she's kind of retired. She likes to shoot it out there in what I call mush when we're when we're on the dog power go car. It's about five miles a lot of times, but we're going anywhere from 15 to 20 miles. So when we do that, she it's too much for her. So we have a special seat so she can still ride along with us. And it's really cool, but. The seat, the whole get up, she's about 60 pounds. It will put a lot more stress on the bike. Remember, these are bikes, they're not ATVs. And they are electric, so the dogs don't pull all the weight. But 
what happens is it puts extra stress on it with her being back there. And we carry about five gallons of water, which is uh, roughly 40, 50 pounds. So that creates a problem too for weight issues. And uh, we're because these are one of a kind custom built bikes, we're constantly refining them. And we have a lot of capabilities here, but the original shop that built them for me uh, has the most. And through the years, we've figured out better ways to do things. They have, we have, as I use them more. And um, we're gonna actually, this is the first time we're gonna visit them, take the bikes, and get get them overhauled. Um, they could use it. And um, we've got a new new one. We're kind of a new old one. We're rebuilding, which will be really nice because that's gonna be the beefiest one of the pack no pun intended so it'll be able to go through uh pretty much any terrain these motors today are amazing these battery operated motors if you uh any more questions folks just just um shoot them in the comment section i can see them but it's a whole nother part of wolf drive and all the equipment i use there goes are he's got the machine up and running <coughs> excuse me so taking a turn I'm going to actually make this a little better for you folks. Excuse me. Make it a little... I took my wide angle lens off. Hopefully it gives you a better view. Now, Princess is like digging a little bit, which is all good for her. I like, I like her engaging like this. Princess! Princess! I don't know I'm here. Jack! Notice how the boys are giving her her room which is good because if they come over there she might get a little territorial and then i'll have to call him up chase he's he's full of it today isn't he full of vinegar jack good boy here comes chase again the machine went down so chase is chase thinks it's his job to to dominate zorro Chase is 50 pounds. He's about the same height as Zaro, and Zaro's 75 pounds. So Zaro's got the Malamute in him, so he's got the big head and the bigger body. But it's uh, quite a bunch of theatrics out here. Is that Princess is chomping at the bit? The... Princess! No! Good girl. If you need me to call him, tell me, Jim. So I'm just getting a message across my phone. I, I know I mentioned this before. The dogs are all wearing AKC link collars, they're called. And what they are, they're designed for people at home that have their dogs out, whether you have them on an invisible fence or even if you have them on a, um, a physical fence. If you have the link collar on them, it just keeps track of your dog. So you essentially have a base station in your house. And the base station will have a Wi-Fi Bluetooth signal, and it'll know if the collar's near it. So when it gets to a certain area, uh, away when the collar that's on the dog gets a certain distance away from it, it'll alert you and say, hey, that dog, whether it's Princess, whoever it may be, whatever your dog's name is, is away from its base station. He got it again. So, there we go, look at it. So it'll say, your dog's away from the base station. And you'll know that, hey, my dog might be out of the yard, possibly. Depending, you have to learn the parameters. You can set up additional base stations if you have a large house or a large yard. But it also, and it's great, it knows when you're with the dog because you pair that system to your phone. So it knows, it'll say like, Zaro is near you. And it's got a built-in light and built-in sound. So say, for instance, your dog would get out of your yard. You would be able to put it in lost mode, and it'll direct you through GPS to your dog. Now, you have to pay, excuse me, subscribe to a service because it's cell phone-based, especially when it's off of Wi-Fi, when it's away from your house or away from you. Um, but, of course, you know, having that on your dog is, is awesome. Now, I've never had a dog lost a dog, but... What happens is, I did lose a collar once because I, they have, um, they're really ingeniously designed. I've been through other GPS collars. Um, and these are really, I, I think looks wise and functionality really designed well. But they, because we're so active and I have other 
collars around the dog sometimes, depending on the activity and harnesses. Sometimes the collar could come at, it's a base station, essentially a base station or a, a collar that sits inside of a collar could come loose. And it did want something. Now they design for active people such as myself. Princess, no, princess, good girl, princess. For essentially for active people where it's like a sleeve where the collar can't come out of itself. But when the, when I lost the collar, I put it in lost dog mode. The dog was with me, but we were on a trail actually. And I, I still use these collars on them, even when we're out adventuring, even when they're tethered to the bike, because sometimes they get off the tether when we uh, take a break in the river, or the water, or whatever. <clears throat> and it was really cool because it directed me back to the collar. Someone had found the collar and put it on a fence. So what I did was, it says I'm right near it. I'm like, well, I don't see it. It was sunlight out, so I couldn't put the light on with it. But what I did was I made it make an audio sound, and I heard it. It's the coolest thing. So they work really well. Additionally, they keep track of your dog's activity. I don't know what the algorithm is, but it's really cool because it'll tell you, you can set it for as much as you want, but they suggest 72 minutes of activity a day. So that could be just in your yard, moving around the house. It, it's constantly tracking the dog moving. And um, when we're home, it's really cool because I learn what the dogs do on a daily basis. And I can see their performance level, like after an activity, the next day, how much when they're outside, they're moving around the yard. Because I can look at the collar and say, oh, Princess got 35 minutes of activity today. That's not really much. She needs another day of rest. Or um, they've got a tremendous amount of activity. That means we need to go out and put some miles on them. So it's really interesting. Uh, it tracks them out in the field, too. I'm not as um, impressed with its field track. And they have a adventure mode where you can actually uh, get the actual come on guys you can set it up to adventure with but that i used it early on didn't work as well and i have these garmin products i use which actually give me mileage readings which is uh, a little more indicative of their performance for doing what we do but when we're at home it's a really good i can tell if the dog's moving a lot if it's not feeling good if it's tired for whatever reason so really a quick good product i'm most impressed with them been a few itch issues few and far between if you have any questions about them I'm, I'm like the resident expert on them because i uh i've been using them so long and i learn the ins and outs of everything pretty much because i push technology to the limits a lot because i'm so interested in um just thinking outside of the box <coughs> excuse me folks so pretty interesting I, I don't think you can see but we got a moon a daytime moon showing. Always nice. Nice when the huskies are out. <clears throat> if you're tuning in on any of them, um, I'm I've got a lot of different Wolf Driver channels, and on Facebook they're not all called Wolf Driver. Um, some are called Famous Huskies. There's a new one where we got the dogs in superhero mode. Um, a lot of fun, and I'm going to be doing more and more with that. So stay tuned. I'll always put it on Wolf Driver, what I'm doing. But I'm going to try to create a website where you can come and see everything. Just get my little message here. Cool. So um, I'm here if you want to ask any questions. I'll give you a mileage reading shortly. I really... Uh, I'm enjoying uh, being here with you guys. Hope you guys are too. <laughs> okay, so let's check mileage. Now, the princess is over there digging, so I won't let her, like I said, do some. Okay. Shag's already got a quarter of a mile, just, just walking around the quarter. Princess is up to three miles, which is good. So I'll take her for another loop in about, uh, actually, we can do it now. So we're going to get back on, and that'll get her up to about three and a half, three point six. Her mileage I'm most concerned with because, again, the more mobility I give her, the more her fluidity she has in her joints and uh, uh, keeping her arthritis in check, etc. So I'm walking over to the scooter, and if you haven't seen it before, I know you see me riding it. I'm giving you a view of me driving it. This is it. I know it's in the shadow, but it's kind of cool because it's three wheel, so it balances itself well. Come on, Sarah. And see, 
Yeah, you can chase it back off. Princess is uh, no, dominant. Come on, no, Jack, Jack. Come on. And I'm just calling them off. Come on, guys. Because um, Jack was going to attack Chase in a friendly mode. But Princess doesn't like that, her being the thinking she's the alpha. And she might try to correct that. And that'll uh, be a battle. Gotta know what you're dealing with, folks. Zoro, come on. So now we're going to go again the other way, yet again. And love doing this because we're clocking mileage. Come on, guys. And I mean, it's just beautiful out here. This is um, God's country. Nobody else out here. There are, there's a few surrounding houses. This farm is the smallest area I go on. This is about, the whole farm here is about 30, or the whole plot of land, there's some fields they farm, is about 35 acres. Most of the places we're at are like 500 acres. Even 600. Come on. Come on, guys. Here. Come on, pretty. So, for Zaro and for Princess, when she's really into it, this takes their attention and their focus. It gives their mind a rest, which I think is important. So, um, Princess isn't as focused as her age. It doesn't let her uh, chase the flag as much as she'd like to. So, this will um, just give her some extra mileage. With Zara, he'll chase it all day long, but because he's so intensely focused, um, it's good to, good to give him a uh, breather from him and get him uh, listening to my commands, let him know, hey, you gotta, you gotta still, you gotta still uh, behave. Behave's the wrong word, just um, still keep me as the, his main focus. It's all reinforcing that. Come on, Jack. Jack. See, I don't want to yell too loud because there are neighbors. So I was going to give him a little bit of an audio tone, a page. But there was no need to do that. Huh, I'm seeing some lights there. It's interesting. I didn't know they were there. Now, look, Princess is... Look at this. She's in front. Come on, guys. Come on. Chase, Jack. Look at Zara, folks. Look at that. So, I don't know if you heard my phone beep, but it was just telling me that one of the dogs is near me now, even though they're all certain proximity. That's that Link AKC collar I was telling you about. Come on, guys. Look at her. So, see, as the day progresses, she actually gets better. Gets more mobility, and uh, that lets her perform better, her performance level. She's actually interested in She's riding right next to me now. I don't know if you can see her. Come on, Jack. Jack shortcutting. I still didn't know shortcutting. So basically, shortcutting is when Jag or a dog anticipates the direction you're going to go in, they feel like they can, they don't have to go the whole distance you're going. And they can beat you to where they're going. Beat you to where we're, they think we're going. Why that's bad is it's okay now. When you're training, because they lose their attention on you. So if something would happen in those points, you would uh, lose control of the dog. Come on, guys. Chase. And they would lose focus of you. That's most important. So if you change up the directions, if he thinks you're, if he starts shortcutting you, your dog, and, oh, my pack daddy or pack mama, that's the alpha, what I call us, is going to go to the left, so I'm just going to go that way. And you go to the right. And you call them, they want to be with you. They want, they want to go that They want to, they don't want you leaving. So they're going to turn around and go the direction you are. And next time you come to that same point in the road, in the trail, whatever, they're going to watch for which direction you go. Good girl! I got ahead of Princess, but she's actually running now. Jag's right here in the field with us. Zaro's right front of me and Chase is way out. He's going to turn back in. And we're, uh, we're running great. I'll give you another mile of training just to let you know. See if my is accurate. I just measure it with this uh, Garmin device that's okay, so we use the pedometer and then approximately one and a half. Now, of course, the dogs deviate some. Jack cut through the field. Uh, Tracking. 
I would say he's pushing eight miles now. Oh, he's a workhorse though. Chase. Chase wants to jump in, which I'm okay with. He can play, but I don't want him coming out here and bumping into me. Okay, so come on, good boys and good girls. Now Jag, he's slower than the rest of the dogs because he's got a smaller stride. He's got, as I was saying, he's small for a husky. He's got, he's much smaller than they are height-wise, so he's got shorter legs. And just to let you know, now Princess is up to three, almost three and a half miles, so it's pretty close to five eighths. Um, oh, I didn't. I told you Zaro's eight. Let's see, that was just a guesstimation. Zaro is. 7.92, folks. <laughs> you can see it's my, not my first rodeo. Come on, guys. We just get back, and they're just going over to the goat thing. Again, I'm just reinforcing my presence here. So they don't mix it up. They can't do that enough. I've witnessed a lot of fights with huskies. So I'm well uh, first in that area. And constantly try to... I'm seeing remnants of a firework or something. Yeah. Just gonna get it out of here. Here we go. You can see the line that I'm running over. I don't know if you can see it, but it's real low to the ground. So I can actually run over it. Even when it's on. Sorry for the bumps. This is what we do. Oh yeah, it was great, man. Beautiful. <coughs> where Chase is at. Chase has got a little more than Princess today. Let's see what we got Jag mileage wise. Jag's talking at 2.67. Like I told you, I like to get him at least three, and uh, we'll have that. We'll probably do another loop or two through uh, circle of fields as I just did. And it's so cool because they created that just for me. Look at Zara. Look at Zara. Awesome. She's really into that goat. I'm gonna let her do that. As I said, um, no damage done. Let her pretty much show her wild oats, what she wants to do. There's nothing she can get in trouble with down there. She's not um, disobeying me by doing what she's doing. And uh, she's an old girl. Let her have some fun. If that's what she wants to do. That's what she wants to do. <clears throat> She'll wear herself out doing that, just going back and forth. Hey, Jag, he's just walking around looking for... Yeah, drag, Jag's like a troll. He's the jokester. By the way, I did create pages, uh, if you're on Instagram or Twitter, you know, Facebook, about the dogs. So everybody can, uh, fill, I'm giving them each their own page. Hi, Jagster. You're a good boy. People also, uh, let me see if I can show you this Link AKC collar. Can you see that? That's it, essentially. The label you see on there so I can differentiate between which dog, because they're all coded. So each dog gets their own exact collar. And I also have my phone number in case it gets lost. You know, in case the dog would run away with it. Now, of course, I'd be able to track them. I should be able to. But, again, I never put myself in that situation. But anything can happen. So if you're expecting the unexpected, to be ahead of the game. Here's the flag itself, folks. See it? And I knew Zara wouldn't be far behind. So what I was saying is I've created these individual pages. And uh, I'm going to explore their alter ego being the... Cause when I put, I don't know if you've seen this before, but I put cameras on the dogs, and uh, it makes them look like superheroes. So I got this idea years ago, but I mean, it's so funny when you pair it with some cool music. Not trying to make it dizzy. Look at Chase, he lopes like a wolf. His build reminds me of a wolf because he's tall and lanky, and actually, because of those tall legs, and he's slender, and when he, Trots, he's kind of like loping. So 
I ran into someone once we were free ranging and I'm allowed to free range. I mean, I have leased the properties for free range in the different areas we go. And uh, so I was like, oh my gosh, wolves, wolves. They were, they were freaking out. It was someone, um, I didn't know they were back there. They were a guest, but uh, <clears throat> of course they were fine. The dogs are good with them. She's actually digging a little back there, but I'm gonna let her do that, like I said. It's activity. And it's appealing to her instinct and her senses. And that just makes the trip more fun, the adventure more fun, and keeps her motivated. I don't know if you can see it. Yep, you can see it down there. Well, that's what we do, folks. So, I call it my job, taking care of the dogs, doing this stuff, because it's kind of a full-time job, and I'm lucky that I can take the time to do it. Um, it's my dream to do this, so I'm actually living it, to be with the dogs and discover nature and learn about them and learn from them um, just not trying to get too philosophical on you but I'm a martial artist um, almost a lifelong martial artist I've been doing martial arts on the dogs I'm not as active in them today but I've taught it competed in every sense of every uh, I think the flag might have come off my watch just for a sec yep still one in every um, way you can imagine and um, some martial arts systems, almost every martial arts system, has um, some techniques named after different animals, and they mimic sometimes how the animals act. Very interesting because animals, naturally, from being in a position of survival, move in probably um, with the most economy of movement. Um, almost all animals you can learn something about that can be translated over to how us as humans can function physically better and actually mentally better. They're always in the moment. Uh, what I mean by that is they're really not a lot of thought process, especially with dogs I'm talking about. So they're not worrying about something. They're not going to... Um, um, dwell on something they just uh they're in the moment and if us humans could do that it'd be amazing and that comes in handy knowing that from a training aspect because they're usually it's not a maybe it's a yes or no how they're going to respond to a situation and if you're trying to train them coax them into a situation that they're uncomfortable with but usually like no you have to realize that you're the way you reason it out with them is not the way you would reason it out with another human or in your mind. So pretty interesting. But on the physical side, the way they move, for instance, you know, how can a dog, you know, these sled dogs, working with sled dogs, actually at their top rate condition, they could run 50 to 100 miles a day in the proper conditions. And if they're physically conditioned to do that, they wonder how they can do that because they, um, perfect muscle control tension as they they almost bounce off the ground as they hit the ground they're using their the momentum and the way they control their paws they're actually gripping certain surfaces and they're doing it in a way that maximizes their performance so it's really interesting and um i don't know i'm always because of martial arts and because of my love of nature and animals uh, fascinated. They, they kind of converge together into um, a lot of interesting views for me. <coughs> Excuse me. So, okay, that's my dissertation there for the day. Back to the lecture at hand. So we still got Princess. <coughs> Excuse me. Get over a little bit. Cold. Uh-oh. Broke. Right here, Jim. Right here. The line, so check it here. The line will occasionally break. Um, believe it or not, the string will last us for over a year usually. It'll break. We just retie it together. The the tricky part of it is you want to use a string that is strong enough to withstand going through these pulleys and the different, I guess, uh, situations they're exposed to. But if the string's too taut, 
or too strong, almost like a rope, and the dogs pull on it, it will, um, you could have injure a dog essentially. So there's a fine line there. Different, there's, there are different tests. Um, uh, string is rated by test strength. So what we do is we try to uh, stay between a certain strength and we can usually find the string. Now, of course, these places that specialize in lower coursing will actually um, carry the string, but you can find it less expensive and a wider array at um, Amazon. And we've had a lot of luck. And again, just in chill mode. Giving you a workout today, aren't they, buddy? Awesome, Any more questions, folks? You know it. I'm still here with you. That's my phone blowing up because the dogs are all near me. <laughs> oh, we got some more comments, I see. If I can get to them. Hey, Zaro. to this so I can get to your comments. Okay, let's see. More comments here. Okay, Mimi. How can I stop female to stop jumping up on me? Um, yeah, I'm sorry. If, uh, I hope you're still with me, Mimi, but that's a, um, what, there's a couple ways to do it. I mean, you can gently pull your knee up as the dog jumps. Uh, I don't like to do it too hard because you don't want to injure the dog, but, um, Huskies are pretty tough, but I'm exaggerating a little by you're probably not going to injure her, but depending on how much force she's coming at you with, as you pull your knee up, she starts hitting that a few times. You're going to realize, whoa, this is not comfortable, and she'll, that's one of the ways of doing it. The other ways is um, if you use any kind of, like I was saying, this audio collar, I've taught them, or you can, princess, princess, no, princess, here, come on, here, I want to. Get her off of that because she's getting too rad. No! Princess! Come on! Here! Here! No, I'm trying to call her. Through audio. Come on! Here! Come on! I'm toning her now. Come on! Good girl! Princess! No! Good girl. No! Princess! Just giving her a little. Come on! Princess! Good girl. Good girl. So she was getting a little too uh, intense there, tugging on the side. Good girl. So I gave her an audio correction, and she understands the name of the game. She was actually started to bite at it. So <laughs> you can see, like like bad children sometimes, but. Not in the sense that, um, something happened here. Okay. I'm going to get back to you, Mimi. Yeah, so if you pull your knee up, if a dog's jumping on you and you pull your knee up, you'll, the dog will hit your knee. Now, of course, sometimes dogs are coming with a lot of force. That's what I was getting at. So you want to be careful and not that you're going to, they're a lot tougher than we are, but just don't want to injure the dog. Um, pull your knee up. The dog will deflect. If you can get it up that high or along those lines, just high enough where it comes into contact with them where they learn. Um, additionally, if you use any kind of, like I was saying, a tone collar or anything, you'll get where you can actually um, teach them that the tone means just like I did on Princess there. That's an unwanted behavior. They start hearing that. They don't like it. If you're not using a collar, you could take um, almost like true trash can lids and Whenever I train a dog, I set them up. And what I mean by that is if I get an unwanted behavior, I recreate the situation to have them execute that unwanted behavior. Therefore, I'm ready for it to happen. And princess, no, princess, good girl. See, that's, that's a husky always testing you. She's, she was going back towards there. But you can see she's coming right back now. So what I'll do is set them up for the situation and then when they 
when they go to jump on you or do the unwanted behavior, take the two trash can lids and or paint can lids, anything to stun them. You're trying to get their attention and they're going to learn that, ooh, I don't like that. And they'll stop doing that. Sometimes you can accomplish that one time. Um, sometimes more than one time, depending on the situation, depending how long it's been going on and depending on the, the level of um, that the, uh, especially the husky, how dominant he or she is. So that is definitely one way that I've corrected similar situations. So hopefully that helps. Please uh, let me know. Okay. So the next one, female won't even keep on a regular, she won't keep her collar on. I have gone through like, she, um, yeah, I've, um, now how is she getting to the collar? I, Chase is very much similar in that way. If you've watched me in the videos, he hates a harness. There's a um, small percentage, maybe even um, more than a small percentage of sled dogs that don't like their harness. Princess, princess. Good. She's seeing Chase. Now, now. See, that's a distraction. She says, oh, he can go over there. Why can't I? So there's a certain amount of dog, uh, of actual sled dogs that don't like harnesses, and they will chew them off. Chase is one of those. So we only have a harness on him when we're rolling. Now, I haven't really tried to train him not to chew it because it's not a big enough problem. If a collar's on him and it's hanging low enough, he will try to chew that too. And that can be a problem if they get a hold of a metal ring they could possibly get their uh, teeth caught in it, or they can chip a tooth, or even even um, worse to a tooth, damage a tooth. So what I do is, you can make the collar tight enough to where you can fit your hand, the palm of your hand, okay? So slip your hand, your finger, the width of your fingers through it. It's tight enough then, and they wouldn't be able to get to it. So um, that would be one way that I, I can't see him chewing. I've never had a problem. Chase doesn't like wearing the collar either, but again, I keep it tight enough. I use these Link AKC collars that I was talking, and he can't get to them to chew them. If they are low enough, he will. Okay, so I hope that addresses that. Little dog barking at the deer going through the yard. Yeah, um, they, you know, depending on the breed, they will do that. Um, again, that could be um, depending on little dogs. Um, you can train them the same way as big dogs. You would need to stun them with a loud noise or with a collar where you can make the audio right next to their ear. That would help discourage that behavior as well. And again, you would have to set them up so you would have to put them out there, wait for the deer to come through, and then do the um, uh, loud noise or if you had a collar that you could do the audio correction that would work. Okay. Um, by the way, the other day when you all were in Delaware Mushroom and we were talking about Maryland crabs, I don't want Maryland crabs. You know what? I'm, uh, princess, no. Princess. Princess. Here. I'm going to give her another audio. Good girl. No. Good girl. Now, I don't know if you saw that. No, I didn't have the camera. I'll turn it. Next she just felt, she just uh, heard it and she said no doubt. Now, her hearing's going bad too, so the collar will also vibrate. It's not a shock, it's a vibration. So it'll vibrate and let her know. She's used to an invisible fence collar, so she knows all about these collars and what they mean and don't mean. It's very easy to train them with. But it'll vibrate, but I don't need to use that. I was just using the audio. That was fine. So um, I didn't want to tell you me, but I had crabs last night. <laughs> so yeah, I, uh, I love crabs too. I'm gonna get some more comments here. So I hope that Helped you on the training. Uh, oh, she didn't hear it. <laughs> hey, Lisa, great to see you from Australia. I hope I'm not too late, but uh, I hope you're still on. We're in Maryland, um, actually near the Pennsylvania line um, at a place not far, I guess, from Hanover, Virginia. Uh, Hanover, Maryland, Hanover, Pennsylvania. So, um, yeah, this is, it's beautiful out here. Temperature is about 60 to 65 degrees. And we're just having a great time. So, well, anyone who's on here and heard the, those, I love giving training advice because, especially for Huskies, because I really know the breed and understand how they work. Um, <clears throat> so I enjoy doing that. And I hope to share my knowledge with everybody. With those princess. So Princess is accepting that I, um, that she can't go over there. I don't want to chew in on that. She'll mess her teeth up. But they get so intense, and that's what I mean. They'll surprise you. You wouldn't think 
she would chew on metal to get to where she would want to be, but they will. I mean, she's not, she's off leash. So the leash with Princess was always the most negative aspect. And even today, she hates the leash. So when you train her, you have to work around that. And um, to get her to run off leash was actually quite a challenge because we couldn't leash her. Oh, there she goes. She's having a ball. So just a quick mileage check, folks. Yeah, Princess is almost four miles now. So she's getting into the range of where I want her to be. And uh, that's always good. Tomorrow we probably will do some free ranging out in the Shenandoah Valley. Look at her coming. And she's barking. That's right, you're hearing her bark. She slipped there. It's okay. She's a tough girl. girl. Okay. So it's a perfect example how when a dog has a unwanted behavior, how you deal with it. Well, she'll still challenge me. Oh, actually, I thought she was going to challenge me to go back to that area. See, what you do is you enforce that where you don't want them to go with the no. And you say that enough that they know it's no. If they don't realize that, you let them go there again and use the audio on the collar or a loud noise. Look at her. Look at her go. I, I love it. I mean, she's not running that fast, but she's running. Sorry, cooking it up. Like I said, we clocked in at 30 miles per hour here. Gotcha, Jim. So we've been on for quite a while now. I'm trying to figure out time. and Let me see if this tells me. Actually, an hour and a half. <coughs> so in an hour and a half... She's done about four miles, which is good. That's what we do on the dog sled, dog cart. So we're, we're cool with the goats, as you see. I let them kind of kind of get most of their instinct, so their wild oats a fair amount. But um, Princess wanted to push the envelope, and that's why I had to cut her off, basically. Are you down or got it broke? Ah, just adjusting. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Still doing good, bud. Yeah, doing good. Princess got four miles. She's trying to run. Yeah, she got tied up down there. I I, I stopped that though. Uh, Zara's got ten. <laughs> no Chase is a little bit ahead of Princess. What are you doing? Zara. He's standing on the line. He's a smart. Smart boy. <coughs> so if he stands on the line and we run the line, the line will come off the machine. No, nothing will get, nobody will get damaged. But hey, hey. Zero. Look at him. Now Zara's getting in the, in the cool one top. That just is going to chase the lure. Interesting dynamic when the Princess and Chase are together always. And I'm always on the lookout. Those of you that are just tuning in or anything, I am the Wolf Driver. I'm your host. We're at a place that I call the Amazing Chase Course. It's actually a horse pasture that I've turned into a, a, a lure course. The lure course is an old canine sport that was developed for sight hounds for them to chase a lure or a toy, a flag, anything that is not living on a pulley system which covers a course of anywhere from three to five mi three to five acres and usually sight hounds do this because they hunt by their sight they have very keen vision so they can see the flag or whatever's on the lure whatever's on the pulley system way across the field and chase it most breeds of dogs will engage when they see something moving will they keep their attention it depends so these two huskies of mine this is Zorro, who's about nine years old He's got 10 miles in, just running in circles, chasing it. This husky, uh, who's 14 years old, she's got roughly four miles of just chasing it. And, uh, and also, additionally, I do another activity out here I call free ranging, which is off-leash. It's a real small, we have a 5 eighths mile of a mile course separate of this, where we go outside of the fence and run around. My other two dogs are Jag and Chase. They're both huskies. All of them are huskies, except for the one that looks most like a husky, who's dark. He's called Zorro. He's uh, got Malamute in him. 
but they're over there by a barn, and at the barn there's uh, goats in there, pet goats. Some of these pet goats, people live here, uh, they do rent in the course, and uh, the dogs get a kick out of watching them. It's all in good socialization. Um, but I always want to keep an eye on it, especially the only pieces. Look at her. She loves it. She's barking at it, princess. So this is really cool. This is a dream of mine to just spend as much time as I can with my dogs, being absorbed in nature as much as possible, enjoying this weather, which happens to be beautiful, a little warm for the Huskies, but it's always warm. If it's above zero degrees, it's warm. But um, we do this year long, so I'll go out and... Uh, we're in Maryland again, and uh, we'll go out in the Arctic temperatures even. We get a blast of Arctic air uh, usually a few times a year. We've gotten quite a few this year, and uh, we go out in it. <clears throat> you can watch videos of me. You can see me live stream, whatever. I've done a lot, and we do all kinds of adventures. But um, that's, that's what Huskies do, and that's what they need. Huskies are uh, kind of a full-time job because they're so independent, and they have an insatiable appetite for exercise. <clears throat> Look at her. I mean, that's just, I get excited. I'm just so happy that I'm able to, Jack, 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 my little audio tone. Good boy. Let him know. Because yeah. what happens with him, he'll start biting my fangs. So, got to keep him in check, too. All of them. And they're all, they're all like bad children at times. You got to know what you're dealing with. But the husky breed is a very prey-driven breed, very independent. So, um, they're, they're quite, a, quite a handful to manage and to uh, win the respect from. And it's, uh, you establish the boundaries, they'll test you a fair amount. update here yeah princess is over four miles now beautiful um zoro is <clears throat> ten and a half miles chase is 4.3 and uh the jagster is almost three so everybody's gonna hit the mileage goals and there's i'm i feel like i'm their coach and i'm just getting them the required activity in so they can uh a healthier life just like a human they need to exercise but in a lot of ways they, they need a lot more exercise than a human i mean we've got four four legs essentially four poles so they're uh, built to run built to be on the ground moving even just going back and forth this entices them enough the movement of the flag they equate it with something living and uh, it's so cool so the next time the machine the machine breaks down here and there and it it it's subject to Zaro especially pulling on it doing what he does and when it breaks down I'll take him for another ride around the field <clears throat> if you have any questions you can put them in the comment section I certainly love to hear from you um, Mimi had some interesting, good, good training questions. I'll take him for a ride, Jim. So, this will be a little bumpy. Uh, I've done this a few times today so far. We're going to go for a cruise around the field. They're flying fields here. So, Chase, <laughs> quite a cast of characters I have here. All have their own personalities. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Jack. Jack. No. Jack. 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 Stalk chase, which is okay, but Big Mama Princess is coming along. She's very uh, dominant in her way, in her elderly years, especially. Uh, she's a little more fragile, so um, if she jumps into that, there's a chance that uh, she could get hurt. I want to check that. I'm just unmatching this dude here. Zorro, come on guys, here, 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 come on, here, 
Fancy princess. Come on, guys. Sir. Good boys. Come on. Come on, Jay. Come on, guys. Here. Here. Here's the magical word. Come on, Chase. Awesome. That's actually princess out in front. So there's, we are in the country of Maryland, countryside. There's uh, houses that surround us. There, this isn't, there, this is, they use some farmlands here, but um, these aren't really farms per se, like the other farms I go to. So what people will do is use some of their land for farming or rent it to a farmer, rent it to the farm, and they get tax credits. Maryland's known for crops like corn, soybeans, um, winter wheat. A lot of hay for horse country around here. So a lot of places I go, you'll see horses from Clydesdales to Belgians to... Come on, guys. Chase. Chase. So he shortcut me too. Come on, Chase, here. And I'll let him to a certain extent. Good girl. And I don't want to be too loud. There's probably, uh, as I said, this place is about 35 acres. There's pretty good space between uh, the houses, but I want to be careful not to be too loud and attract other dogs or people. Um, there's no. Uh, never had an issue, but I'm always being considerate and want to walk softly, basically. Come on, guys. So, it's not a shortcut me, too. The only thing I got to compete with, there is a driveway. It's a private driveway, but um, I want to make sure that Chase, they know I'm here, but... I want to make sure uh, if there's any deliveries or anything to head them off for the dogs on. Chase! In the way. They know where we're going. I'm not going to get up to this point now with the princess. A little bit of a, someone burning a little fire here somewhere. It smells so good. And here comes Princess. I'm going to stop and show you. Running on these different textures, when they get on blacktop or a hard surface, it helps manage their claws, their, their nails. And you can look at the wear on their nails. Come on, good girl, to see if they're actually dragging it off. Back legs or whatever, especially with the little dog. You want to look for shines like that. If they wear up, the, if the nails wear down in certain different ways, it can be um, indicative. It could be overworking. You know, and she's off the so she doesn't have to do so much. But on, when she's tethered, she can scoop her little bit. When we to areas that are grass like you know, they're actually claws. They the claws they grip. That's how they climb rocks. Negotiate uh, the terrain, for instance. And it's really nice exercise for them. So I enjoy all the different terrains. Here she is, I love you. And I really think there's a big benefit to all of them that you'll come in contact with. So I'm always up for going through rocks, through dirt, mud, whatever the case may be. Sand, we've been to the beach. Because um, the more I can expose them to, that's going to help their uh, physical ability, their fitness, the better health they'll have. Good girl. And she's just doing awesome. So, by the way feed them a raw diet so and it's frozen I give it to them actually frozen and uh, 
The frozen part helps, most importantly, regulate the speed they eat. If you have a uh, dog, you know, that kind of inhales this food, um, I know they make certain bowls that help slow the intake down some. But another way of doing it is using a frozen diet because the frozen food, they have to take their time and chew it up. Essentially, they can't just inhale it. Also helps with their teeth. And uh, for what I do, it seems to be uh, agree with what we do. Princess, no. Come on. Good girl. I'm just taking the scooter back. Come on, pretty. Good girl. Just encourage her to get away from the area. Hi, <laughs> Oh, man. Phew. Feels good, Jim. Jackie hit 3.3 miles. This is why I called through. Yeah, broke. He had it? Yeah, he had it. Oh, that's awesome. Glad you did that. Yeah. Look at, look at, look at Zoro. And look at Princess. By the way, after that run, folks, we just hit, she hit 4.67 miles. So she's almost at the five mile range. It's amazing. I'm just so, um, again, can't be excited about it. But, and uh, everybody's got their mouth when I want. So we've accomplished the goal. Now I'll just keep it going. I'll let her actually hit the five miles. Oh, yeah. She got almost five miles. She did six yesterday. What's that? Got two miles? 3.3 <laughs> I got out of him. Yeah. yeah. Check. That's just going to go over now. Good girl. <laughs> oh, we didn't, we didn't do a Zara read. Hi, good boy. What you been doing, buddy? Always, whenever a dog comes up to you, he's the best boy in the whole world. I mean, or she is. Hi, good boy. Hi, and here comes the pretty princess. Sometimes even two like this will be a little competitive towards each other. So, bless you, free. Bless you. Notice when I release, Jack, no. When I release them, I said free. Um, just because, believe it or not, when they huddle around me, they're all vying for my attention. So, again, that could be a territorial situation where you can have a little skirmish. Always prepare high go good. Girl in the whole world. Okay, let's see. We didn't even check it out. Check the mileage on Zorro. 11.79 miles. He never ceases to just chasing this thing. I mean, yeah, we took a couple of couple of runs out in the field, a couple of loops. And it was 12 miles. He's got 12 miles, Jim. Zorro. Yo, he will. This is his thing. By the way, the antenna is part of the GPS collar system I use. It's called a Garmin Alpha 100. We'll probably stay out here another 15, 20 minutes. <coughs> there she's taking off. Backing up her mileage. Now, the beauty of this place is <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> this is about a, uh, 45 minutes to uh, about an hour from home it takes me about an hour to traffic and that gives the dogs a chance you don't want to ever feed a dog right after you work out similar to a human but a dog can be low, which can be fatal so it has to do with air 
getting into their stomach and turning their stomach over. Now certain dogs, it's hereditary. They're not exactly sure why it happens, but one thing for sure, um, they seem to agree on that from feeding them too much after activity, because they had air, the big intake of air from panting, uh, could be a contributing factor. So I, I always recommend you wait an hour to feed them after and before any activity. I, I don't feed any of my guys before activities. Um, I usually feed them once a day, and it's uh, after, well, uh, an hour or more. Good boy, good girl. After the activity. So uh, the ride home is nice because they're not just sitting around waiting. Hey, girl. Chase is going to guard in the goat area. Yeah, they're not just sitting around waiting. They actually uh, patiently ride home. And then when they get home, they get to meal. And then they're done. We will get another activity in tomorrow, possibly live broadcast on free range and run, possibly in the Shenandoah Valley. Oh, let me check. Sorry, I haven't checked right to see if I comments. Uh, okay, sorry, I'm back, Lisa. Um, oh, I'm, uh, I'm going to be 30 degrees. It's going to be 30 degrees. They're very hot. So, um, in Australia, you're talking uh, Celsius, I'm figure, which is hot. Um, yeah, Deborah's asking what time it is in Australia. I, I know I've been to Australia. I've been fortunate enough to fly there. It's beautiful. I, I just loved it. Um, we went. I went with my wife and my father and mother, my parents, going back to 97, I believe it was. And from where we're at in Maryland, that was about a plane ride. We had to fly to California, which is five hours. I think it was a 27-hour flight. And you cross the international date line, and I believe you guys are like, oh, 20 some hours ahead of us. You're like the next day. <laughs> Can't remember the exact time, but I, when I used to call home. I have to figure it out. Like, who am I going to wake up now? It's the middle of the day there. It's funny. Zara, Zara, Zara! We're just yelling at him to let go of the flag. <laughs> he took it off. So, Jim will fix that. Boys are down there. Um, starting to cool off now again we're in february so and i know australia is um the opposite they're they're uh opposite the seasons we are so because they're on the other side of the world so it's summer down there i'm assuming that's why it's so hot or at least uh maybe it's fall over there but it's gonna be hot in any case um well princess is now officially at five miles folks and her coat looks really good because she just got shampooed last on Friday. Her and Zaro got a groom. And this Friday, we'll be chasing Jag. We have a groomer that comes to the house. Uh, it's too much to take, too much work, I should say. And I'm not comfortable taking the dogs to a grooming salon. I just, uh, I've done it in the past. These dogs, again, they're double-coated woolies, so they need to be groomed once a month, especially or with the high activity level we do where we're out in all the elements from rain and uh, wet to whatever time of year it is to actually uh, burrs and stickers getting embedded in their fur. I get most of them off, but sometimes they get really deep and uh, the groomer needs to assist me or I don't find them until the groomer comes. With double-coated woolly dogs, you can get matting really quickly. If uh, you get an area of matting on a dog, it can be very problematic because it can develop infections because they, uh, the air is trapped, can't get to the skin, uh, they scratch at it, they bite at it, uh, it opens up, they get a wound there, and pretty much all hell breaks loose. So I want to be very careful that. That's Princess. Princess has always had a really good profile. Um, it's so impressive on Princess because at her age, she's still got a lot of muscle. She's still very muscular. And um, when she gets groomed, she stands for a while. That's the biggest challenge, uh, is keeping the dog, as they get older when they're groomed, keeping them standing because, of course, the groomer needs to work around their body. And if they sit down, <laughs> they can't get to their hind a lot of times. So um, Princess, because of her motivation, energy, and her uh, attitude, she pretty much manages to stand the whole time which is pretty surprising, again, for a dog her age. So, I mean, listen, 
it's definitely um, our conditioning, but also a lot of times it's hereditary, you know, just um, she has the genes that uh, keep her like she is, that have helped her. I'm still monitoring. The, uh, your feedback. Mm. I'm just checking. Sorry, folks. Part the phone here. Gotta check the emails once in a while. There's Princess again. There's the flag. And you know when the flag comes by, Zara's not far behind. Now these two are going at it. They're far enough away from Princess. Because again, oh good, good, she turned around anyway. Her dominant attitude will cause her to sometimes mix it up with the boys and be a little too much for them. Because she'll, she'll uh, try to put her hurting on them and... Uh, it won't be pretty. <laughs> Jag staring down Chase. And this is kind of cool. This is get some great socialization. And it's another form of exercise for him. Veterinarian once told me, you know, a human could never play with a dog like another dog. Other dogs, I mean, I've seen them, the dogs pull, taking turns, pulling each other across my back patio with, by their tail. And I'm like, that's got to hurt. But no damage done. Oh, you can see Chase really in, in game mode now. Look, look at this. How cool is this, folks? And uh, they're staying down there. So, Okay, bud. They're having fun. We're, we're all good. So Jim says something's wrong with me. Of course, so we're down for a couple minutes. So Instead of taking him for another ride, I'm pretty much done. They've got their mileage in. Uh, I'm just going to wait it out in here. Jack and Chase seem to be having fun. Don't want to make those rides too um, too much work for them. I want to keep their excitement so you don't want to do it too many times. Princess! Princess! I'm just letting her know. Easy, big girl. So she's a typical husky build. She's probably a little tall for a female, um, but she's got that husky stance to her stature. She's bigger than Jag. Jag's just a little bit smaller than her. But again, he's small. So my color just... Um, buzzed me so these again I'm using these Garmin devices uh, collars and uh, tracker and controller they're designed for hunting dogs really so they they use terminology like treed and on point and they have little illustrations that tells you if the dog's moving or sitting because a uh, hunter's dogs will get way away from them these um, supposedly depending on the terrain have eight or nine miles of range my dogs are always invisibility. Only time I'll let them out is, hi, good boy, Jag. Jag, you came up to me, so I had to stop for a second. You're a good boy. You're a good boy. Only time I'll let them out of, out of my sight when we're out free ranging is when there's a cornfield, and they always have their GPS collars on. When the corn's tall, the stalks, they like to meander through in and out, and it gives them shade in the summer, so I let them meander through there and run. As long as I track them on the GPS collar, I know where they're at. So that comes in really handy, too. So, uh, we're a little bit attracted over to the left of me because neighbors, uh, some of the people are home and, uh, getting home from work now. So they're checking it out. Zara's going in this. So they're usually, um, they won't bark at people. Um, if they have a dog or something over there, they might get overly excited. So I have to, uh, keep it. Princess got five and a quarter miles. She's working on six miles. Uh, she's having a ball. I mean, 
this is uh, what it's all about. Check the feed, see if we got any more, any more, if we got any more people. I'm up for uh, questions, folks. If you have them, let me know. Facebook feed might have crashed here, so excuse me while I reset it. Get right back with you. How we doing, buddy? You found it? Okay, we've got comment. Well, any more comments? What time? Out? Nope. Any new ones? So, if you're just joining us, folks, we're doing a activity. It's called lore coursing. But if you know me, the wolf driver, I uh, like to play with words and also uh, think outside of the box. So, all the activities I do are based for huskies. And it's kind of cool for people watching from the outside because huskies are one of the breeds with probably the highest endurance and uh, energy, um, most the largest appetite for energy. So if I can get the huskies to do certain things um, because they're so extreme, chances are you can use a lot of what I'm doing here for your dog. So basically, lure coursing is where the dogs chase Good boy and good girl. That's the princess. Good girl. She comes up. I got a better. Whenever a dog comes up to me, whatever we're doing, I always praise. So, so, no. Good boy. He was just eating the flag. <laughs> so, basically, Lord Corson's where they chase a flag that's on a pulley system with uh, it's rides a string, and it's usually on courses anywhere from three to five acres. Designed for sight hounds because sight hounds have such keen visions. I'm talking like greyhounds. And they can see way across the field so they can see this flag which has no scent because other most other dogs have a better sense of smell and they hunt prey with their nose so most prey will give a scent and the dogs will be able to tell what direction it went and follow it well the flag has no scent it's only visibly um they can only see it visibly so the other dogs don't have as keen a vision as sight hounds, so a lot of dogs wouldn't be as interested in this. But there are some that are. I got two huskies right here. This is proof. I've been doing this for years. You can look me up on the internet, put in Wolf Driver Google. I call it the Amazing Chase. M A Z I N G. Not amazing, just amazing. Starting with an M. Chase. And Zara's got better than 12 miles today. I'm just chasing this flag. So I was talking earlier, I showed the equipment off. We had to custom make all of our equipment because the current equipment out there would never hold up to a husky uh i burned up i had battery fires and everything um so i had to custom make stuff and it gives the dogs usually a sight hound will do a lap or two okay zara's probably done 100 laps and they're done their energy's expelled but um with these dogs they can go all day and that's why this is a great sport for them if they're interested. It helps them explore their instinctual side by uh, because it's prey-driven. At the same time, it takes a lot of time because they're going to keep going and going and going until you can chip away at the energy. Princess is 14 years old, folks. And I'm going to give you a mileage reading on her. Everything is uh, clocked here through mileage. Um, I use a Garmin Alpha 100 controller. I'm going to check Princess's stats right there. Can you read that? 5.42 miles, average speed 4.23 miles per hour. Okay, I'm gonna do Zara's now. Now the sun's going down, so you can see this clearly. Let me see if you can see this. Zara, get the camera to focus on it. Not clear yet, huh? Zara's at, oh, I'm wearing my contacts, so it's hard for me to see close up, but I'll tell you what it says. 13.20, average speed 9.38 miles per hour, folks. So that's the kind of activity level now sled dogs just so you know huskies um a lot of sled dogs out there they could do with proper condition and proper proper conditioning and proper weather conditions terrain etc they could do 50 to 100 miles a day i don't do that with these dogs because we don't do that kind of adventuring but we have gone 30 miles on an adventure before um i call it wolf driving you can look me up in google wolf driver See me here on Facebook, wherever you're watching. <clears throat> the difference in what I'm doing and um, a lot of what you'll see out there is I'm actually out here doing this stuff. A lot of people, 
you know, post beautiful pictures of huskies and everything. They, it's not their husky and they ain't doing nothing with it. So I'm the real deal, the source. Um, any questions you have about huskies, I'm an expert trainer and um, dealt with many huskies. So I understand the breed very well. By the way, um, if you're hearing my phone beeping, I'm using a Link AKC collar in addition to their Gar Garmin Alpha 100s. And what the Link AKC does is it keeps track of your dogs through cell phone, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth technology. Therefore, if you're at home and the dog would stray away, it uses base stations and even your phone. Um, the dog's not near you or near a base station, they'll tell your dogs away. You can put it in lost mode if your dog actually did get away. I've never had that happen, but I'm prepared for it. Um, I have lost a collar because of the design, and we're so hardcore. They updated their design for um, mega dog sports like I do. But I lost a collar, and I actually was able to track the collar down using the lost dog mode. And it was during the broad daylight. It was on a trail. And I'm like, oh, it says I'm here, but now how do I find it? Well, it's got sound and a light source so you can hit the light button that's not going to help you too much during the sun sunlight but when i hit the sound i heard where it was and i was able to pick up my collar somebody had moved it off the trail and put it on top of a fence post thinking they were helping me out which is cool i was looking on the trail because i was pretty sure i lost it on the trail i knew it was on the trail but i thought it was on the ground hello mimi hey mimi if you're still there um i was giving i was answering your questions and i enjoyed doing it so I'm going to go through it again. Your first question was, how can you stop your jog from jumping on you? A couple different solutions I offered. Uh, one being gently pulling your knee up, depending on, you know, if you're physically able to. Gently pulling it up as your dog approaches you. Dog hits your knee and it learns, wow, that's not real comfortable. Not doing it hard is to not injure your dog or injure yourself. Second uh, option I offered is to, again, when you get an unwanted behavior, you set a dog up to exhibit that unwanted behavior in an environment that you're ready for him or her to do it. So you could possibly um, make a loud noise. They don't like hearing loud noises. It catches their attention and it signals to them that a behavior was unacceptable. So you could take two trash can lids, two paint can lids, to symbols, something that's going to make a loud noise, set your dog up so she will get ready to jump on you and go, boom, you make that loud noise and she'll learn as you say no, she'll learn that that's an unacceptable behavior. Additionally, if you have any kind of training collar with an audio source, like I use these Garmin Alpha 100s, you can, the sound will be closer to their ears because the collar will be on them. You could use that to trigger um, a no and teach them that that is an unacceptable behavior. So that's one way um, I did offer advice on that. The other thing you said was um, the dog not keeping the collar on, and I was explaining how a lot of sled dogs, even Chase, he chews off his harness. Now, it's not a big issue because he doesn't chew it when we're running. It's usually when we stop and he's bored. When he's tired, he won't do it. But with a collar, he doesn't like a collar either. So if you keep the collar tight enough and tight enough I mean putting your hand in that way so between the skin of the dog if you can get just your fingertips and your palm that's how much width you want between the dog's skin and the collar uh, he wouldn't be able to get to it now with tags hanging off of it they might be able to so I usually um, don't use tags what I do is I take my collars and I label them or have them engraved with my information in case, God forbid, the dog got, would get lost and not be with me. Um, and that keeps them from chewing on him. Keeps him because he would chew on a charm or something hanging off of it. So I hope that helps you. And the next question, you had your little dog barking. Same thing, you set the little dog up, uh, be ready for the deer to come through the yard, and you can create some sound very loud um, to kind of spook her a little bit. And that would reinforcing that with the word no that would help curb it some possibly a collar with an audio source be the choice too so i hope that answers your question uh you, you you did say about crabs the um i had crabs last night i didn't want to brag about it um there's oh i got a bunch of geese flying over i didn't know i'm being out here in the field 
you, you always have to be cognizant of all your surroundings. And when I hear something, I gotta, I gotta think, what is that? Because I got the dogs out here. Now these dogs, if I had, we have a little Chinese crested. If I had her out here, the possibility of a bird of prey grabbing her is a very, very high, high uh, chance. We actually had a hawk try to grab this flag in between two of my dogs. It was not intimidated by Princess and Zara. This is years ago. I wish I would have had it on film. And I since learned that they'll use this type of lure coursing, what I'm calling amazing chase setup, to rehabilitate dogs, to teach them how to hunt again, because that resembles prey. So it's pretty interesting. But um, last night, I was just some geese flying over. Last night, I walked outside my house, and my house is not, it's in the woods, but we're not in the real wilderness. We're not far from uh, the uh, a populated area, small town, well, bigger than a small town. In any case, I heard a weird sound. It happened to be, from what I could tell, it could have been a fox. It's mating season, but I think it, more it was a coyote. And oh, I see the geese flying in formation. I don't know if you can see that. There they are. That's nah, too hard to see them again. But they were actually uh, coyote. It was definitely a coyote. And uh, so you have to uh, be cautious when you're out there. Us as humans, and especially dealing with other animals. Look at Princess. She's just having a ball. I can't believe we're still out here, but uh, did it stop? Both of them? Oh, cool. Working you today, Jimmy. <laughs> okay, folks. Now, Princess, I got to give you a reading on her. Can you see that? 5.8 miles. And you can see these things are color-coded. Up here is purp uh, pink, purply pink, showing her collar. Because I have to know when I'm in the field who's what and what's who and all that good stuff. Her average speed is 4.26 miles per hour. Now, watch me, Chase. Oh, oh we got a situation here. This is always a fun situation. <laughs> Jag and Chase. Now, they're playing. Princess is on. Um, she's uh, uh, alert to it. Sometimes she'll want to get in the middle of that. And that's why. Princess! No! Princess! Good girl. So they're chasing each other on the other side of the field. That's good. Um, I got to show you this. This is the Z-Man, Zorro. Can you read that? 14.16 miles today. He's done just chasing the flag at 9.40 miles per hour average speed. Zorro's about nine years old, and um, that's about average uh, run for him on this course here. He's still chasing. And the thing with Zorro, he'd go all day if he could. He just, um, that's how intense these dogs are and the insatiable energy drive they have. And he's chasing it because it resembles prey. They're very prey driven. The sun is starting to set here, folks. I'm going to hang with you for a few more minutes. We're going to get Princess to six miles. And uh, we're going to call it a day then. I gauge everything upon the dog's performance. And again, at her age, 14 years old, the mobility that, um, the more exercise I can give her, the more mobility and fluidity she has in her joints and in her muscles. So, by the way, I didn't mention that's my, what I call the dog bus. The dog bus is my economy ride. It's for um, close adventures where I don't need much equipment. You've probably seen the big truck I call the Jumbo Jet Liner, which is the uh, custom-made uh, Ford six-door excursion. There's Princess. Oh, she's waiting. She knows the flag's coming around. She's waiting for it. Wow, lots of geese coming. <laughs> there she goes. amazing if you haven't seen these I don't know if you're just tuning in on the broadcast I use these cooling tubs where the dogs can jump into them cool their pads off they're deep at their pads are the bottom of their feet paws which is uh, they actually sweat from it but not really doesn't really cool them but when you can put them in water you can cool them down it helps cool regulate their body temperature uh, additionally um, they're shallow enough where their underside can get into it where their internal organs lie. Why okay. well, I don't like that. 
beautiful sunset down here. This is what wolf driving is all about. Again, if you haven't heard of me before, you can just put wolf driver in Google and get back. She's barking at it. She's still got it. And you get a lot of results on all these different activities I do. And pretty, um, pretty epic adventures we've done in the past. Like, uh, we raced some uh, Belgian horses, which are like Clydesdale, Clydesdale horses. Like the horses in the Budweiser commercial. Big grafting horses. Uh, raced them in a the dog power go-kart. Uh, ran through Washington, D.C. at night. We've mushed through. Um, those are all part of our adventures that we've done. And that's all available on YouTube and the Wolf Driver website. Multi multiple Wolf Driver websites. Any questions? I'm going to check it one more time before I call this a day, folks. Any questions about any equipment, activities, dogs, training, anything? Um, hmm. I think my uh, program might have crashed here, so I'm going to give it one more try. It's hard running all these phones yeah, simultaneously. Okay, so we've been on the air longer than two hours. Facing the flag. I'm gonna close out by giving you final mileage readings. We're still running, so they'll probably sprint us 6.01 miles. Oops, just did her. Chase, 5.6 miles. Oops, keep going chase, sorry. Zaro, 14.77. And the Jagster, 3.71. So that's a wrap from here. Again, with an amazing chase course. You are live with the Wolf Driver. I'm gonna sign out. Everybody have a great day. Thank you so much. The wolf Driver. Hey, Billy, Billy. Yeah. Jack, Jack, Jack here. Signing off. This is like a Jag back.